Hello, trader. Hello, traders. It's 8:01 a.m. Chicago time on Tuesday, the 11th of February, 2020. Thanks for joining me on episode number one, 1,690. Derivatives trading involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Uh, this morning, risk on uh, following the big rally yesterday. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Crude oil is leading the pack. Crude is uh, moving towards its MC point of control at about 5080. Currently, 5042 up 85 cents or a dollar seven, 1.71 percent. Uh, the DAX uh, follows that up 1 percent, 140 points. The euro stocks up 0.75 percent at 28 points. The bonds are weakest, down 21 ticks. Gold is down $4.90, trading at 15.74 and 60 cents, and the 10 years down 10 and a half ticks. Uh, this morning, um, there was uh, there's a, a testimony, a scheduled testimony, uh, in front of the um, in front of Congress today by the Fed chair. And those comments were released at about uh, 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern, about a half hour ago. And uh, there was, the market had uh, taken a pop higher and uh, dropped. The S&Ps took a pop higher and, and dropped and then went sideways. Um, and so it's, uh, it was rosy, but not really. Um, it did refer to coronavirus and uh, the, the risk of contagion and, and many other things. So... Uh, that is scheduled for 10 o'clock today, 10 Eastern, uh, in the calendar of events, uh, and, and we're, we're going to look out for that. Uh, the, the remarks have been released, so uh, we expect that uh, there's not much that's, uh, that's likely to uh, um, change between now and then. Uh, the Chinese government's reporting that there are 2,478 new mainland China virus cases um, on February 10th, this thing is really, uh, just seems like we were getting it under control and it's just really spiraling hard to say. And frankly, I just don't believe, uh, what the Chinese government's reporting. Um, they say that the situation is improving in some province in provinces, but, uh, we're not seeing it slow down. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, currently, um, ECB's Lagarde is speaking, uh, and then this afternoon, or after the open, uh, we're looking for uh, U.S. JALTS job openings at uh, 10 Eastern, expecting 7 million, of course, Fed Chair Powell's testimony to Congress, um, and then really for the rest of the day, there isn't much uh, Fed's Ballard speaking at uh, 1.30, Fed's Kashkari at uh, 2.15 Eastern. And then after the close, we get API crude oil stock uh, change. Priors 4.18 million. Uh, and then this evening uh, out of Australia at about 6.30 Eastern, we get the Westpac consumer confidence change. That's what's scheduled. Uh, and having cleared this impeachment stuff, uh, the only thing that's on deck is the uh, coronavirus uh, issue. Uh, so that's where we stand looking at what was expected yesterday versus what we got um, the primary scenario we were opening in a gap down in uh, balance yesterday and the expectation is that it likely go sideways indications from friday uh were pretty uh were pretty obvious uh at the time that uh it's likely that price will explore lower at least fill the gap uh, and push down uh, into 32.94 ish, uh, but that was completely wrong. Instead, the market played scenario three uh, without the pullback. We didn't even get a pullback test down. Uh, we had basically an open drive uh, yesterday. As soon as I saw the open drive, uh, that immediately sets off a caution, uh, caution to shorts and uh, to stay out of the way uh, of, of buyers and look for pullbacks. This is what actually happened yesterday. So I was uh, just thoroughly off on what was expected 
Uh, I do expect that there may be a push higher. That was kind of scenario two, a push higher into the range and then a test down. But the way this was setting up, uh, given the delta, the day, the Friday, given the way Friday set up with a lower low, lower high, and a lower uh, acceptance of value, uh, the, the play that we would end up with an open drive was not likely, especially, especially on the Monday after non-farm payrolls. Uh, very, very unusual action yesterday, but in either case, uh, we did check the prior day's low to the tick there, 33.2075, pulled back and then broke higher. That is the opening swing uh, from 16 and a quarter. The dead giveaway was that we opened um, at 16.50. And the best the sellers can do from the open was one tick before it started taking off. Uh, so we immediately went to the prior point of control right there for a little pause. But none of the rotations were heavy enough or turned enough to give uh, to give a nice clear chance to uh, to pop. What we had yesterday is a lot of zippers and then continuation. Zipper, continuation, and so on and so forth. Uh, even later in the session, the next uh, the the next big impulse, just a very tight high flag type zipper continuation on the close, zipper into the close. So we expect a continuation overnight. Very very obvious there. Uh, if you were long into the close, there was really no reason to close that trade other than your risk rules or margin requirements. Uh, on this lower pane here. P A N E on the lower pane on my chart, this pane shows uh, the rotations, right? So if I turn on the zigzag indicator, uh, it'll read the same as what these rotations read eight and a half points, eight and a half points, a small pullback of two and a quarter, two and a quarter, and so on. You could see very early on that the buying was far exceeding the, the selling, except for the first. Uh, push up to the prior low and rotation uh, really the buyers had much more power uh, and then it just died out pretty quick here uh, right when the initial balance was formed it was starting to die out it looked like it may actually rotate back down to 28 couldn't even do that um, it's just not able to do that and then we get this next big rotation and then it dies out, and then we have a rotation into the close and sideways. Um, uh, it's this, this. I've talked about this in the past. This is not the kind of day uh, that is favorable to me. It, it'd be nice to be able to uh, catch a pullback and, and run with it. Um, but I don't, you know, uh, a big issue that I have as a trader. Remember, I'm going on to 20 years now as, a, as somebody who's been looking at the markets pretty intensely um, and I can tell you that uh, FOMO is a huge uh, nemesis uh, and and trend days tend to uh, bring out the FOMO in me and in people and so I would rather not participate until something clear uh, until we have a clear pullback uh, and and we I just didn't uh, just wasn't interested yesterday no trades uh, so that's where we are in the big picture. I mean, this this thing was really strong. Like you you, you see it kind of curve up uh, parabolic uh, with the delta following along. So to me, this was deadly to fade. Looking at the big picture, let's look at the composite. This is our composite chart. Uh, each bar here represents a, a trade. Um, each bar here represents a trade, uh, a trading day, uh, day session only. Uh, and we're looking at what's happened all the way back on this chart, all the way back to around April, late April, 2019. And this pattern of pushing, pulling back sharp, and then continuing, uh, that we see here, push, pull back, sharp, continue, push, pull back, sharp, continue. This is where the Fed's kind of involvement began with the repo market. We could see the market kind of ripping up, uh, kind of ripping up and continuing higher. 
uh, and uh, we're we're just pushing into a key area in my opinion 74 to 76 has multiple measured move uh, confluences there measured moves are mathematically based they're not auction based we're new or new all-time high territory so I can't rely on the auction uh, and you can see as as the market pushes higher the Delta is relatively strong uh, and playing along this has some staying power uh, still so it just continues you know this is uh, as they say a bull market uh, climbs a wall worries uh, the market doesn't really care uh, about those things that the media is pushing. Um, so turn that off and keep your news feed on. So overall, that's what that's where we stand. Uh, in the overnight session, you know, again, typical typical trend day close, closes at the high, and then we have consolidation on the open, and as expected, a push higher. Uh, we did have a pullback to the mid, and we do have the point of control uh, beneath us, this is a weak high. We have a double top, uh, a bona fide uh, or bona fide, as some people like to say it, bona fide uh, double top at the uh, at the high, which was broken at uh, right there um, uh, at the 7.30 um, release. And, uh, and we're sitting sideways, another P-shaped overnight uh, profile so we're looking for this to continue to breach higher see so that's where we stand pretty boring uh, in my opinion pretty boring market it's uh, just not uh, it's not the the kind of market that is that suits my taste um, but whatever it's you know the market operates in regimes and phases it doesn't have to appease anyone especially not me uh, and so it does what it does, and, and we continue on. Looking at the order flow, you can see there's just nothing beneath, really. Uh, and much of the uh, heat map has liquidity above. As, and as you've seen, as I've been showing this over the last couple months, that the market tends to move towards that liquidity. Uh, we do have a measured move top here at 66.50 that's expected. We haven't breached that yet, uh, but, but I'm expecting it to squeeze through. And I'm looking at this area as a key uh, test area and potentially a, 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 a potential scalp short, depending on how the market uh, approaches. So I'm going to be paying very, very particular attention to 74 to 76 scale in, uh, likely to scale in there. Um, and then I'm expecting it to rotate back down to below 65, uh, providing about a 10 point opportunity. Um, and so that's what, what we have in the order flow, you know, looking even deeper or farther out, you know, I have order flow that goes out, you know, 200 points or whatever it is, whatever the CME disseminates. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing really out there more than what we see between the 66 and 70 uh 70 zone so you might want to pay attention to that area if you have confluence there um this is a, a very clear area to uh, potentially engage the market so that's where we stand in terms of what's expected for today just to get uh, down to business here uh you what you see on the screen there in in gray bands here is uh are the stock zone area the stock zone areas, these are built on measured moves, uh, as I said, because I have to, I have nothing to go off of when it comes to the auction, so I have to project prices uh, up, and so, and so the expectation here is we push near highs, is an open, uh, potentially a, a, a driving like open that squeezes into the 66 liquidity expecting it to fall back through, come back into 6160, and then start to squeeze into that 7475. Uh, the market has not done a very good job on these gaps, close to close the gap. So I'm looking for, when this happens here, I'm looking for what areas can I lean against to get long, to go with the gap, okay? this We've had many gap and go situations now. Secondary scenario is is the opposite, where we open 
take out the high, and then we immediately get a drive, pull back to the overnight point of control, push down into the overnight mid, and potentially get back into uh, 5350 and the mid-century figure at 50 before it bounces back up, consolidates, and holds steady waiting for the next rotation. Not seeing a good argument for, um, for a sell-off, but uh, what we could get is, because this is new all-time highs in the day session, we could get what we've seen uh, quite often, uh, as we saw last Thursday, we could see the uh, the market opening up, opening up and pushing lower right away, consolidating at the at the high and then squeezing down. And in that case, I'm looking for 41.39 before the bounce at scenario three. Okay, the push up from here because it's a gap is expected to be relatively uh, grindy. Uh, the push down is expected to be relatively strong. Uh, but uh, even though we do have, we may have uh, pretty good selling on the way down, it's likely to be resisted. Now, price has, you know, the way the way this has been working is new all-time highs. Prices are higher. Uh, we get less participation, uh, less aggressive participation by buyers. Price gaps lower. We get a little push lower, and then we get strong participation by buyers. The auction is 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 operating as expected. A little tough to read because it's one way in new all-time high territory, but still it's uh, it's uh, respecting and following the expectations. So my job is to wait on the open uh, to see who is dominant, what kind of test we get up, what kind of test we initially get down, and then jump on uh, whichever side is winning the fight. This is what we're looking at. I'll leave you with that. Um, CT members, don't forget we have our trade talk at noon central, 1 Eastern today. Uh, we're just going to do a market uh, walkthrough uh, to stay in line with the context, and I'll catch you in there. Good luck, everybody else, and I'll see you tomorrow morning. Take care.